Focusing on newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, before we get into the treatment paradigm, what is the minimal workup that you do before you start the treatment? Fantastic. Well, I think it's important to remember that, gosh, it's a decade ago, but the diagnostic criteria for multiple myeloma changed, right? So many of us probably remember the good old crab criteria and looking back and kind of squinting hard and saying, oh, there's a little anemia and there's a little bone and there's a little of this. And we were waiting for patients to kind of jump off the cliff, if you will, to where they have end organ disease. They had some kind of permanent bone or kidney disease or something that prompted us to want to start treatment. Well, in 2014, that changed where we're trying to identify specific biomarkers now that will help us understand who are at the highest risk for developing end organ disease in the near future. So that really now drives our diagnostic workup, if you will. So let's start off with basics. I think we all are comfortable ordering our CBC and our CMP, both for the, pur the purpose of understanding, is there anemia? What is the renal function? What are the calcium levels? Those are easy for us to obtain and get a good sense of what's cooking kind of under the surface there. So once you've had your basic blood tests, I think the next steps are to make sure that you've really looked at those bones as best as you can. So the gold standard x-ray, the skeletal survey thing is gone. No more. Um, we really are trying to look in 2024 at high, you know, high technology. How can we look at bones in more clear and sensitive ways? So probably the sensitivity of the of the x-ray, just x-rays is 60 percent, which is not good enough. So at a minimum, we recommend that you do a whole body low dose CT scan of the entire skeleton, or if you can get it through your insurance company, it's preferred to do a PET CT. There are whole body MRI options as well, but just do something that's a little bit more advanced than just x-rays alone. So now you've looked for anemia, kidney dysfunction, you've looked for the calcium levels, and you've looked for the bones. That'll kind of give you some basics. Because presumably that you're doing this because some patient walked in the door and had, you know, someone had found that they had a pair of proteins. So you have their SPEP or you have the serum-free light chains, the immunofixation um, as kind of all available to you, quantitative immunoglobulins. You want to collect all that data because that is what will ultimately help you understand, you know, what this patient's diagnosis is. And then you have your bone marrow biopsy, right? So 10% has been our cutoff all along to say more than 10%, you kind of enter into at least that smoldering range. But now we kind of say, okay, 10 to 59%, we can classify those patients as smoldering. Once you kind of hit that magical 60%, you're now hitting that biomarker that says greater than 60% involvement by clonal plasma cells in the marrow is multiple myeloma. So once you have the bone imaging, the blood test, you can do some urine tests. That's how we torture our patients is 24-hour urine collections. It's not gone yet. We hope it will <laughs> be soon. The last thing, please do not forget, is the LDH and the beta-2 microglobulin. Those are two very critical components to evaluating the staging with that revised ISS system.